Hey, my lovely Willow Vibes tribe members. I am Jessica from Willow Vines Intuitive Vibes, and I'm here to do a collective message. So please like the videos, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe to join the tribe. Um, I did a reading this morning, and a lot of past life energy was coming up. So I feel like that's just a separate message from whatever this is going to be, because the energy does feel different. So I'm just going to share that as is, even though at the end I said to be continued or, you know, whatever comes out. So, um, that was just something for someone. If it's not for you, that's fine too. I don't, I'm just going to share it. I don't know who it's for, but it seemed kind of prominent. So anyways, moving on, I, I went to, I can't remember the name of the place now, but my son called it mom's magical place. It's not my place, but <laughs> it's uh, like a mystical store. And he got me a gift certificate there for Mother's Day, and I haven't used it yet, so I used it today, because I'm just like, hmm, I wonder if that place is open. And I was looking at cards online, because even though I got 20 million different decks, I don't know, different ones speak to me at different times. So it's like, it's hard for me to get rid of anything, because I might not use it for a long time, and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, there's something in that deck that's going to scream at me, you know, for whatever messages. But I wanted something fresh. So maybe a lot of you are changing perspectives on something or you just want something fresh and new, you know, like a fresh start is kind of what it feels like because this is just like starting over or something. So I just want to show you right quick. I got the Enchanted Soul Tarot, which never heard of, and the cards are really beautiful. Well, you can really see it because of the light. What is that one? Nine of Cups out of all the cards I picked just to end. It's like wish fulfillment, wishes, satisfaction, happiness, dreams coming true, warmth and joy. <laughs> so whatever this freshness is, it is exciting and it's what you want. It's working towards what you want, but I feel like it's receiving what you want. And there's more to my little magical place, little share. And I got, um, I'm going to use these ones too. Magic of You Oracle. The cards are beautiful. And I always talk about keys and guess what? There's keys on the back of that deck which is cool and there's swirls on this one which i draw those all the time and that is a spiritual symbol sign anyways um and i got the poe tarot which is cool because it's got poetry on it so i'm not using this one in this like that deck in this reading but um yeah and i got this little this little tree thing and i was thinking the tiger's eye and i didn't even realize it but there's one in there I was like, that's cool. So I was all excited. And today has just been a day of luck for some reason. Because yesterday was kind of funky chicken. You, if any of you watched that reading or the video, um, thank you for your love and support. And, you know, stepping up and letting me know, like giving me those confirmations that I do help you. Even if you don't tell me exactly how or why or what I said, you know, it's just that's the point of all of this. So. It um, makes me feel really good. And I heard last night that even through all the feelings I was feeling that today would be a good day. And it has. It's been very smooth. You know, I don't know, like, not very many roadblocks or hiccups, you know what I'm saying? And when I went to that magical place, <laughs> I used the gift card and I had to pay like $58 on top of the gift card. And um, she typed it in wrong. So I saved $8 and I'm like, are you sure? She's like, yep, yep, you're fine. Don't worry about it. So I got a discount without, without it being intentional. Plus it, I woke up to a donation this morning and now that my daughter works at Dunkin' Donuts, I get free fucking coffee. Do you know how much coffee I drink? Just say it. I'm just like, it's just been one beautiful thing after another. Today's just been wonderful. So I hope that you guys are experiencing the wonderfulness of of life whenever that happens to you those little blessings because it might seem small and ins in insignificant but it's it all adds up you know i don't know it made my day <sighs> so great i just want to say i really do appreciate and enjoy the small things so let's see what's going on in this reading i just want to say i love you so much i just do i love i love all of you um I just I love you guys so much. You'll never know what you guys mean to me. A thousand percent. Because words can't explain. Maybe somebody wants to tell you that. So what is 
going on for the collective. I just heard you're an amazing person. So someone is thinking that way about you or you're thinking that way about another person. Like, wow, like, that's amazing. I don't know. I feel like you're amazing. Um, and another cool thing, I think it was a couple days ago in one of my readings, I started singing... It was about friendship and stuff, but it was like, lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be, I'll be your friend. I'll have to carry on or whatever. <clears throat> well, it just randomly popped up in my head in that reading. And today when I was driving back home, um, I changed the radio station to one I never listened to because there was commercials on every fucking one. And I didn't want to hook my phone up and go through music and whatever. So I just kept pushing the preset buttons because I couldn't remember <laughs> which one was which and it goes on 94.9 and that song like no suit one ends and uh, like it was perfect timing and then that song came on and right before and I was like oh yeah and it reminded me that I, I picked up on it a couple days ago because I'm like what are the odds of me listening to this I never listen to the station and that's the song that's coming on so someone might want to let you know that they're there for you that they they give a shit that you're amazing um but at the end of the song before it fully ended the monthly test I don't know, emergency alert system test came on and cut the song off it's almost like if you think of it from because it's coming up for a reason if you think of it from like a spiritual standpoint signs and stuff that song's all about being supported, being there for someone. Like, I'm there for you, or, and, and I want you to be there for me. And then an emergency comes in, and it's done. It's the warning system. A warning comes in, and it ended something. It's almost like you were possibly, I don't know if it's flip-flop, vice versa, or whatever, that you were there for someone, and then there was a problem, and now they're not there for you because of a problem or they don't they can't man up or woman up or something it's, there was an interruption in this situation for somebody and they weren't supportive somebody probably thought something was all in your fucking head all in your head or all in their head because we have flash over it's all in your head but is it her crown chakras lit the fuck up somebody doesn't believe in signs if you were picking up on, on sign synchronicities, just intuitive hits and stuff, someone didn't believe you. They probably thought you had psychosis or some shit, or you were having a psychotic break, because that's just not true. So there's a skeptic here. Yeah, that's why something ended. Something ended because you weren't believed. It's funny, too, because when I was shuffling the tarot deck... I saw the Queen of Wands, she made herself known, like popped out of the deck. And in that in this new deck, she looks kind of like a jester in a sense. Kinda not really. That was the first thing that popped in my head. And if you think about it, it's like she looks silly. She looks like a clown. Somebody thought what you were saying made you look stupid, made you look silly. Like, okay, you're fucking weird. You're fucked in the head, man. That's what someone was thinking about you. But whatever was going on is not all in your head. This has probably been proven time and time again. I'm just going to say if that will resonate. But I feel like somebody was looking at another person as though they were a joke. <laughs> okay. Keep telling yourself that. Like that kind of shit. But I feel like you just kept pushing forward. Whether you were aware of what this person was thinking and feeling and saying... Um, or not, the key is within your grasp. I don't know, whoever that is might end up being on the losing end of the situation because I don't feel, I feel like they lost a good friend. Like someone who would always be there, a true blue. And just because you're that type of person, because you're loyal, doesn't mean that you remain loyal to those who are disloyal. You know what I mean? You're loyal to the right people. Somebody might be seeing that like, oh crap. I guess this wasn't all in so-and-so's head. They, they weren't fucking 
they hadn't lost their marbles. They had them all together. They're just trying to organize them, you know? Flow. Recovery. <laughs> Moving on and finding finding peace. I thought that said pace. Like keeping keeping the pace up. Like pacing yourself. Finding peace. You will find peace within this situation. I feel like most of you already have. But you're moving on from people like this. Even a specific person. It's almost like it's okay that you thought that of me. You thought this was all in my head. That, that I was clowning around. That I looked stupid. That I was weird. That I was whatever the hell they were thinking. It's different. Whatever it is. It's like, it's okay to think that stuff. It's okay to feel that way. What's not okay is to hurt another person in the process. Um, and sometimes sorry isn't enough. You've moved on from this. You're letting go of what other people think of you anyways, especially if it did bother you before. You're gonna find closure in this situation. Because that's all it's going to amount to. That's what it feels like. I don't know if somebody's going to bring in closure and be like, hey, yeah, this is what happened. Um, I do feel like that could come in for some of you. Someone coming clean about whatever, you know? Like, even if they weren't a problem, just their own misjudgments and assessments of the situation were all fucked up. And why am I thinking of that? Okay. I know I get sidetracked sometimes, it happens for a fucking reason. So, I was thinking of a fishbowl, and I did a reading a year ago. Um, and it's, the title, I didn't rewatch it, but the title was something along the lines of, I might rewatch it, and if it's significant, I'll share it on here again on the community tab so you guys can watch it too. But it said, Jump no longer in the fishing pole. Because it was making me think of the Pink Floyd song where, like, we're two fish and just swim around in a fucking fishbowl, go around, around, around. Well, there's a cycle that's been broken here. And the only reason it's making me think of that reading, the title of it at least, because I don't know what's in it, I can't remember, um, is I have a bowl. It's not a fish bowl, but I have two little rubber duckies. One looks like a, a girl and one looks like a boy. I don't know why. They're both rubber ducks, so I don't know why one's a girl and one's a boy. <laughs> but <coughs> anyways, one of them someone sent me um in a little care package that thing they put a bunch of shit together and it was really cool it's the same person that i made these magical cunt cups for i have one she has one because we are magical cunts just saying but anyways she sent me a teeny tiny little rubber duck and that's the girl one <laughs> i don't know why but years ago i found a little baby rubber duck and while i was walking and it had a dot right on its forehead like I tried to scrub it off because it was on the side of the road so I washed the duck when I got home and like I said this was a couple of years ago and the dot wouldn't come off it, uh, it was like it's fucking birthmark basically or tattoo or something it was just one dot and it makes me want to get up and go get the fucking duck and show you guys because I was like well huh but anyways the other night I threw that duck in the bowl I'm like, swim, motherfucker. I don't know why. I just, I do weird shit. And it's making me think of this. And then this morning, I took him out of the bowl. And I set him on top of when pigs fly. Because I got a little salt shaker that has a pig with wings. So that motherfucker's flying because it's protected. Just saying. Um, because pigs don't usually have wings. It's a salt shaker that another subscriber had sent me. Because of the things that I would say and mention in readings, like people remembered, which is so sweet, you know, that you guys pay close enough attention to know the things that I like and the things that, to remember the shit I say. Because sometimes I open those boxes up and people send them to me and I'm like, whoa, it's just so magical and fun. But anyways, I put that motherfucker on top of the pig. <laughs> I don't know why. So I think that duck is flying. He or she, probably a he, because I keep calling it a he, is out of, it's out of the fishbowl at the very least. So it's almost like when somebody doesn't believe in you, believe you, or believe something, it feels like you, you know, they don't believe whatever the hell you're saying or 
whatever you're working on is just to them. Um, don't make a lick of sense kind of thing. Well, if it's not for you, it's not supposed to make sense. You know what I mean? Especially with what I'm doing when it comes to readings. But I'm going to start sneezing. I was totally fine with the sneezes. Now I'm going to sneeze. I feel like I just got pepper up my nose or something. You know when you open up the pepper thing and you're just like, whew. Something like that. So it might be a whew moment for someone. Anyways, it's like going round and round. Like, Because if you think about it, being in a fishbowl, this is all you know. That's all the fish knows is the fucking bowl. You know, whatever's in it. Whatever you put in it is what the fish knows. <coughs> they don't know the ocean, the lake, whatever. they, Because this is all they've seen. Yeah, because it's a lack of understanding. That's what I'm getting at with this analogy. Just bear with me, people. So the fish only knows what it can see. What it's seen before. What it's lived. Its environment. So maybe that's what the duck represents when I threw the motherfucker in there. It's like, you know, this is all you know. It's very confined. There's so much more to life than this situation, than this person, whatever. There's so much more to it all than what you think you know and what you think you understand. You got to open your fucking mind. You might have never thought that this person would expand beyond the little fucking fishbowl. You know, they were stuck in that little box. There's a change in perspective here. He probably knew it was coming, but yeah. It's like, how can you understand something that you've never read? You've never seen you. You've never, you don't know you weren't there. So if we're talking spiritually, if someone didn't believe some of the stuff you were saying, it's because it just didn't make sense to them. Like someone had to have told you this or whatever. It's like, I don't know. How did you know what was outside of the bowl? Well, it's just divine intervention. It's what it feels like. Or some type of spiritual gift regardless. It's an inner knowing that that's unexplainable. But I don't feel like it's on the Mr. Ducky side. It's on the Mrs. Ducky side. <laughs> Fucking ducks. Fuck a duck. Um, moving on over. The big dogs coming in. Fucking A. Is it moving over? I can't remember the name of that song. I used to sing that a while ago, too. Is that bad to the bone? No, that ain't bad to the bone, is it? Moving on Because it's like, isn't it the mean dogs? Come, the dog changes in that song. Listen to the song, whatever it means to you. It's an older one. Um, but I said the big dog is moving in. Huh. But I said something about moving on. As you're moving on, whoever this person is to you, they're moving in. On you. It doesn't feel like in a threatening way or anything like that. Like, you're not paying attention to somebody's just sneak attack. No, that's not what this feels like. This is like, you're looking in a different direction now because of the situation. You're not looking at that duck. Or whoever the hell it represents. Because it represents a person who was just stuck in their ways out of ignorance ultimately um which means lack of understanding for those of you who don't know most of you do but some people don't really understand the english language i'm just saying it's just like i don't know why i want to say this but like in the beginning um i don't know it was like towards the very beginning of when i was doing readings I said something, I made some comment about, I said retarded or something, and someone had a shit fit about it. This was years ago, like probably five, six years ago now. And at the time I wasn't very um, strong, I guess you could say, cause I took offense to everything. Not really offense, but I took it to heart. And I'd be like, I don't want to offend anyone. I gotta be perfect, you know, whatever. But I made it clear that the way that I intended the word wasn't an insult because the word retarded means stunted, so. That's why they call people who have, you know, mental stuntedness. That's why where that fucking word came from as an insult in the first freaking place. 
regardless, I don't know. The something that was taken out of context is what I want to say here. Yeah, somebody took something out of context. <clears throat> so we're going to move on from that because I'm just going to keep talking up here anyway. I just want a little bit more on this. It's all in your head. With the, yeah. Well. It's all in your head. What is this about? I don't know. I just feel like somebody didn't believe you or they thought you looked like a loon, you know? But it is what it is. Because I don't feel like you are that way. And um, it's because you don't fit into the cookie cutter box. You're different. You march to the beat of your own drum, which is amazing. You go with the flow of life. And that is weird to people, especially when everyone just gets in line. You know, whether it's the military, because if you think about it, every soldier does the same fucking thing. You know, you have to. You, you line up. You, you get in line. You know, that's where that saying comes from. But if you think about it, like, when it comes to society, there's there's always, there's a shit ton of followers and there's very few leaders. And I feel like you're a leader. You're, you're take charge energy. You, you took the lead in this situation. You took the lead in your own life and you went the other way. There was a, a meme I saw where it's like all these followers, like people, society, whatever, are all just going in one direction and you're going in the opposite direction. Like... You guys can follow that motherfucker right off the cliff. I'm going this way. Because you listened to yourself and because you weren't doing what everyone else was doing or what they thought you should be doing, like how people are supposed to be. This is how you're supposed to act and react and blah, blah, blah. Because you did the opposite of all of that. You're weird. You're wrong because nobody's following you. Well, guess what? Every leader, they don't start with a following. They really don't. They have to gain a following. <sighs> Even whether you're leading people in a good direction or a bad direction, every leader has to start somewhere. And it usually starts with making a fucking change, taking a chance, doing the opposite. And that's what you did here. And you were looked down upon for it, which 90% of leaders were in the beginning too, until they made a difference. And then... People were like, oh, this bitch makes sense. I'm going to follow them instead. It's just a big game of follow the leader in life, apparently. But I just feel like you were that one that was like... You saw the warnings up ahead. Like, oh, I see. All these people are going to fall off the ledge. They're all going to fall off and die. This is a bad idea. I'm not going that way. And everyone's like, but this is what you should be doing. This is a great idea. And you're like, no, I don't think it is. Nobody believed you. But you believed you, which is most important. And that's what sent you in a better direction. So what sent you away from a problem. Because you're not a fucking follower. There's something to do with a shovel as well. I don't know what the shovel is about. If it has to do with, like, digging dirt, digging for dirt, or if you're literally digging a hole. Somebody could have thought you were digging a hole for yourself. Like, oh, you're digging your own grave, saying this, doing that, going against the grain. But, um, I actually think you were digging the grave. The graves you were digging were for your enemies. Like, if I was digging my own grave, then how come I'm digging so many holes? They ain't all for me. None of them are. Like, that's what that feels like. Because <clears throat> whoever these people are that were problematic for you at one point, they're going to fall right in. I don't think you're going to bury them, though. It's like, oh, I did the work. I dug the hole for you. There you go. Whoop, one by one, they all fall in. And you just walk away. Like, have fun getting out. That could also be, like, a, a symbolism for the ascension process too because I used to use the example from the movie Labyrinth where you know she falls into the oubliette and she's got helping hands which is like the universe the divine going we can help you which way do you want to go but so the helping hands can help you but you have to make the choice to want it to to try you have to put the effort in because they can't choose for you spirit can't choose for you either we have free will no one can we have to make these choices for ourselves so she's like going, I don't know, like, she knew that going up would be better. 
but she chose to go down. Like, oh, well, I haven't seen this yet. <laughs> so I'm going to go further in the fucking hole. So they go, well, that's your choice. And they let go of her. And she goes down into the hole and she's sitting there with her friend there, Hoggle, whatever, helps her out. Um, even though there were bad intentions there because this friend was not her friend at first. He grew to like her over time. That could be in this situation where there was someone who was in your life for not a good reason. Maybe you were aware, maybe you weren't. And then, I don't know, but he was helpful. And But it was to lead her astray. It's like, I'll help you through this so that you could go in the wrong direction. So you can get in line, you know, with what the Goblin King wants or what society wants, what whoever wants. Because that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to make you go one way when you're supposed to go another. But then he ends up helping her in the end because he realizes that she's not a fucking problem. He or she is just in the movie. So those graves that were dug, whether you dug them or not, those people, whether it's, okay, I don't even feel like it's willingly. They're not going to jump into these things on purpose. They're going to stumble into them. It's like when people dig themselves a hole they can't get out of. And instead of having those helping hands or you there to throw down the rope and help pull them out, they're going to have to, they're going to have to climb. They're going to have to dig at the dirt and hope that it doesn't give way. I don't know. If they thought that they were going to rise to the top, they just fell right to the bottom. Whoever that is. It's more than one person. It could be people in your family as well. Because they're beneath you. And I don't feel like you view these people that way. Like, oh, I'm superior. It's not that. It's when it comes to, you know, high vibing people, low vibing people. And it's, you're just not on the same level as this person. But I also feel this in a literal sense with success. Um, financial security, abundance, whatever. Whatever you're working towards, you're going to be doing well for yourself. Um, in life, with whatever this is. Blessings, basically, are coming your way. And whoever these family members are, or these people that you considered family, because they don't have to be blood-related to be family, won't be sitting at the table with you. Enjoying these blessings. They'll be in. They'll be in the hole. Trying to figure out how to get to you. And they won't be able to. Because I don't feel like. You're going to deal with these people. Or this person that's more than one. Because of how they treated you. What goes around truly comes around. But it's almost like that. Yeah right energy. Because like I said. You're not following suit. So you must be wrong because nobody else is doing what you're doing. Nobody else is behind you. So whatever, do what you want. And then, you know, then you're at Trump status financially. I'm not saying it's going to be like that, but um, he makes a lot of fucking money. I'm just saying. And you're going to be looking down like, would you like a penny? Because the quarter's in the fire. I'm sorry. Chump change. <laughs> it sounded like I said Trump change, but it's chump change. It's like you can have the crumbs. Yeah. You're not worried about this. You've healed from this. You're not going to heal shit with whoever this person is, and I feel like you're at peace. Like, you're not in pain over this loss. You're not in pain over these people not being around you, them not listening. Because you have a, a higher understanding of... Not only why everything unfolded the way that it did for you, but you know who's good for you and who isn't. You've moved on. You're not sitting here crying over this. You're not crying over spilt milk. None of it. You got out the bounty, the quicker picker wrapper, the paper towels, and you cleaned up the fucking mess. You're like... Laugh at me all you want. Don't worry. Because the joke's on you. Nature spirits. I don't know. It's just make it. This made me think of a tree hugger. That word literally popped in my head. And I don't think that way. Because I guess I am one. You know. <laughs> Anyways. Like. You know. No matter when you know it's not even just in the 60s and stuff but no matter what the time period is time frame is
people, hippies were, they are looked at funny. Like, you're weird for being a naturalist, for for your world views, for peace, love, and fucking harmony, for wanting to live in the woods away from people. Like, whatever the hell it is that you got going on, like, people like that, they get judged a lot. But they're the ones that are on track because they're not doing anything out of hate and they're keeping to themselves, living off the land, you know, doing... They're not... They're not the fucking problem. It's the people that view them as a problem who are the problems. Do you know what I mean? That's just an example because I don't feel like anyone's picking on a hippie or anything. It, it's, it's just like that was the first analogy that popped in my head. Like, I mean, people say it with highly religious people too. Oh, you're just a holy roller or a Bible thumper or a fucking tree hugger you know it doesn't matter if you're a pagan you're a witch you know there's names for everything and those are just closed-minded assumptions you know um they're shit opinions based off from nothing because a lot of the times the people who are calling anyone these names lack understanding you know they're the ones that need a saving grace not the not the one that's getting pointed at. You know what I mean? It's your fucking lucky day. Luck is definitely on your side. You're going to find something outside that's very significant to you. I mean, it could be a piece of nature that you just come across and it's just captivating. It's like, oh my gosh. Or you're going to find an object or something. There's something you're going to find outside. Um, so it's not in your home, might not even be on your land, your property or whatever. You're going to be outside somewhere and come across something and it's going to be significant to you. So i what is this? What are we going to find outside? I don't think I'm going to find it in this card. I might. Across. You might find yourself while you're outside. A newfound sense of faith just saying but it feels like an object so some of you might actually come across a cross or clover it's not luck it's divine because I'm looking at I mean I know that's the the club I believe yeah the clubs the six of clubs but it's also success if you think about it but it looks like a three leaf clover not a four leaf clover and the reason why the four leaf clover is lucky is because not fucking very many of them it's hard to find in a clover patch you know because they all look the same it's almost like so, there's something here that's hard to find because everything looks the same or it's just a clusterfuck or something no it's not a clusterfuck it's like how how would you find that how did you find that? There's something you found or that you will find. And it's going to be like, how the hell did you come across that? Someone's going to be shook up. Because the divine is going to lead you to something. I don't know what the object is, but it's, it's not luck. It's not like, oh, this is your lucky shot. Or you're just really lucky. You got a lucky streak going on. I can't believe you found this. You can't believe you found that. You could have found something in the woods or you're gonna. Or on a trail. It's outside. How did you find that? Spirit led you to something. That's how you found whatever this is. It wasn't just a stroke of luck. Because you could do it again and you probably will. I don't know. It's like... It's making me think of, I don't know, for some reason, like, Where's Waldo, you know? Those books. I mean, usually Waldo stands out pretty good, just saying. But it, it's it's those fine, you know, where you find shit, whether it's Waldo or not. They have harder ones, too, where you have to, you have a list of items that you gotta find. And in the, the weirdest places. Maybe someone's playing a game like that with you. Or they want to. Or they did, or something. But it's like... How did you find that? How did you find that? It's something like that. There's a snake here. Sneaky people. How did you fucking find that? Did somebody hide something? And you found it? Hmm. Well, whatever you...
you fucking found, information, object, or otherwise, there's someone that didn't think that you could or would or should have found it, and you did, or you will. Because I don't know if you did already or if it's coming up. You were led to something. Dot, dot, dot. Like, that could be to be continued. Punching holes in someone's story. I don't know if somebody's, like, with what they're saying. Could be. Miss Spiderweb. Reconsider your alliances. Make new connections. Like, punching holes in your story. It's almost like contradicting everything you say or downplaying it or something like punching holes through it. And it's almost like as they're punching holes through your story, you're, you're collecting all these little hole punches, <laughs> all little pieces of paper. And now you can just use it as confetti because you're going to be able to celebrate. There could be a celebration coming up as well. For some of you, you need some space in a relationship. You probably just need time to yourself or time away from someone. The serpentine path to power, but this was reversed. You're not weaseling your way to the top. You're not the slithering snake, like being shady and sly to for power or to gain control in a situation. I feel like you're relinquishing control, just going with the flow and letting go. Like... It's kind of like you have no power over me, so no one can can make you do this or that. Whatever you're doing is your own fucking choice. I don't know if somebody was trying to control you in the past, like, steer you in the wrong direction, like I said before. If, if they were, they can't now. I don't know. If somebody had a level of power over you, no matter what that was, financially, just because, just whatever, they they don't anymore. They don't. You're free from someone or something. There's someone here who is jealous. That could be the one who was trying to punch holes in your story. To make you seem less credible or something. Like, I don't know what this bitch is talking about kind of thing. And you're like, well, you don't need to know because you're not supposed to know, huh? Oh, yeah, there's the Queen of Wands. Doesn't she look like a clown? <laughs> like, she she looks silly. Someone tried to make you look like a fool, but I do feel like they were viewing you that way. Like, like yeah, okay. It That was something from the past, but there is something coming up with this. Well, we have the Queen of Swords. Quick-witted, independent, honest, principled, intellectual, aloof, or divorced, independent, and honest is this is the truth. Well, there's the King of Swords right behind her too. Those are such cool cards. Just say maturity, authority. Somebody was trying to have authority over you to be in charge. Power is on this card too. He looks kind of dark. I'm just saying, look at his eyes. And she's all bright. I just heard, I'm just fitting in just enough. I'm fitting in just enough to make something happen. You're a lot smarter than whoever these people are, or you're a lot smarter than people gave you credit for, is what I want to say, because I feel like there's a level of manipulation here. This could have been a prior relationship. An ex of yours could be involved as well, because we do have family here, or an ex's family, or ex-family members, you know, whatever. Celebration, marriage, community, stability, parties, reunions, bliss, basically. No. You're being honest about what you want, who you want, and you were honest. 
you were honest about who you wanted, what you wanted, what direction you were headed in, and it wasn't in this King of Swords direction. And they wanted to regain a sense of control in the situation. So they could have spread some lies here, but they didn't like what you said. Whoever is in this Queen of Swords energy, they didn't like the rejection for one, but they didn't like something you said either about them. I don't feel like it was about them. I feel like it was that you're moving on. So if this person's interested in you or wants to reconcile with you, whether it's an ex or not, they were mad at you because you said no. I don't want to reconcile or no, I don't want to be with you. I want to be with so-and-so or I'm moving on regardless. Somebody was not okay with that. But it was the truth. You were telling the truth that you were not with this person, that you didn't like whatever you said was the truth. And they got fucking butthurt about it. Yeah, somebody got butthurt about something you said because it wasn't what they wanted. It's like a level of entitlement, just saying, like, you don't just get what you fucking want, but this person's definitely gonna get what they need, and they're not gonna be very happy about it. Um, the Empress. Well, you've definitely grown, I'm just gonna say. Nurturing, fertility, pregnancy, creativity, sensuality, and abundance. Abundance. It's like, no, I don't want this. I'm working on myself. I'm working on my goals. You were building something up for yourself and it's almost like a picturing every block that you're putting in place for this like to build your foundation whether it's just your your home life or a career path or whatever every block that you're putting in place somebody's pushing it or fucking it up like making it so it's not level or that it won't um like so it's a faulty foundation because that's where the poking holes is because now it's making me think of in the labyrinth where she's drawing the arrow so she doesn't get lost with her lipstick and the the little munchkin things under the the maze are like wah, 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 turning it around and so it fucks her all up it sends her in every direction someone could have just been confusing the fuck out of you too but it it feels like like you have, if you think of masonry work, building walls, whatever they are, it, it has to be level and lined up and done properly or the whole fucking thing's going to fall over. And you were doing it correctly, but you had someone, every time you put the mortar down, they'd scrape it off so not every, every brick would stick, you know, so those ones would fall out. And then you'd have to start over again. Like, why does this wall keep breaking? Because of some motherfucker, because of what they're saying tower that's a fucked up card look at that one upheaval upheaval <laughs> causing problems disgrace uh release downfall flash of insight revelation hmm you probably figured this out oh my god this is like trickery it is so funny because it feels like now, okay, you got someone who's fucking up your, your tower. I don't know, your wall, whatever the hell you're building. The foundation. They're screwing it up for you so it will be faulty no matter what. It will always fall. You know, it will never work out. And you're like, all right, I'm going to outsmart this mofo or mofos. Seems like, I don't know, there's more than one person in this energy, but there's one main joker. But uh, one way problem, that's who the real fucking clown is. So anyways, you're still working on the faulty wall. <laughs> because that's what you want this motherfucker to think. So, oh, I'm just, I don't know what's happening here. I'm just going to, I sound like Bill Burr. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. I'm just going to keep, keep trying. You know, like, um. The definition of insanity is like doing the same thing over and over and over expecting different results which is what this person thought you were doing because maybe you told them like oh this is what i'm working on this is what i'm doing i don't know something like that so you're continuing to work on the bullshit but you're building your new wall over here a secret wall in your secret magical garden <laughs> but regardless it's it's whatever you're working on has been kept to yourself your ideas so this 
this structure is going to work. This foundation won't fall. It won't cave in. It will be long standing. Because I almost kind of feel like, you know, you're just pretending to build this fucking wall over here and, and you're planting trees. Because I've used a garden analogy and your tree's taking the fuck off and trees are a lot stronger than walls. Just saying. It's like you think you're so smart. I'm going to distract you. You want to distract me, so I'm going to distract you with your same crap <laughs> and just continue working on this because you're not going to be paying attention to what I'm truly doing, what I'm truly working on because your head's so far up your fucking ass. You tricked the trickster. That's awesome. I really like these cards. <coughs> That's so cool. Like the game of chess. You you were being just as strategic as this, this person or people because the queen of swords is pretty fucking intelligent too. Just like the king of swords. He takes a logical approach. He or she is just, you know, masculine, feminine energy, but this king of swords is intelligent as well. But... When you think you're so smart and you get that, that cockiness to you, you're a bit arrogant, that's where you slip up because no one's ever right all the time. You know what I mean? Like someone didn't look, they didn't see the loophole. They didn't, they didn't see the cracks. I don't know. You saw through something that this person couldn't see beyond. I don't know, because now I'm still thinking of the fucking wall analogy where, like, say you got all these bricks and you're seeing what other people can't and you're not believed because who cares, you know, you're, you just trust yourself. And it's like, all right, this, this foundation might look good. This situation might look good. This connection, relationship, whatever might look, I don't know, home situation, whatever, might look picturesque on the outside because everyone's going to see this wall perfectly made. But you see these, like, multiple bricks glowing and you're like, those bricks are faulty. They're going to either be pushed through or they're going to crumble or they're not attached properly. Like, whatever it is, it, they're... That's the problem. Those are the problem areas. You see the problem when nobody else does. They will when the wall falls. I'm just going to say. When the foundation crumbles. They'll see that you're right all along. Four of cups reversed. There is a level of rejection here, but you're... You're not holding on to whatever this is. You let go of something because you saw that it was faulty. You saw you saw that it was fake. There's holes in someone's fucking story. You saw through some crap. Huh. The wheel of destiny. That's so funny. Instead of the wheel of fortune, I used to say that. The wheel of destiny. And fortune, just saying. This is your destiny. Karma, huh? This was a faded event. Luck is definitely on your side, but I feel like someone's getting a hefty dose of karma. It's a faded opportunity coming up. Someone's going to seize an opportunity. And if this hasn't happened yet, you're going to see through their shit. You're going to be like, hey, okay, this wall is bullshit. <laughs> You know, and you might push the bricks out and be like, see, it's like a game of Jenga. You suck at building or something. I'm just going to say, when you can see a problem, that's when you can fix it. If you want to. So that, you know, so that things don't go to shit. So the wall doesn't fall down. But whatever this is, it's, it's false. It, there's something that was built off from lies, not all of it, but there's lies like woven through the situation, which is why it's not sturdy.
Yeah, someone's trying to cover their cover their ass, cover up their past actions as well. There's communication here with the Ace of Swords. This opportunity to talk about something, to, to share the truth, is um, it, it's faded. Someone really wants to talk to you. There's a significance with a tow. I don't know if it's like tow truck, your car's getting towed, or your actual tow. Um, and the truth. Yeah, somebody wants to tell you the truth about something. I don't know. Whoever this is, if they don't take the opportunity to come clean about this or to speak, to say whatever they have to say, whatever they feel they should say, they're going to be in, in the holes that were dug. I don't know. There's pre-dug graves, which means an ending. You know, if they fall in it chasing you, like, oh, I don't know. If they keep doing what they're, they're there's a booby trap here. Basically, they're going to fall in fucking holes and it's just going to be done and over with. I'm just seeing people dropping like flies, but they're just dropping out of sight. They're not, they're not passing away. Yeah, there's communication here. It's time to move forward with this. <sighs> to conclude this fucking story. This is the final chapter. Seven of Swords. And the opportunity. If someone thinks that you'll believe their crap, they're sadly mistaken. There could be an offering here as well. Look, she's like hiding. And she sees this. Like, you don't know I'm here. <laughs> what is that about? A dream catcher could be significant as well for some of you. Someone hiding. What are they hiding? They're hiding. They saw something. Somebody could have read your messages even. That could have been why they got butt hurt. And they wanted to get even. There's someone here who overheard something, saw something, read something, and it pissed them off. Something you said pissed them off. Whether it was a message, like on your phone, a device, or whatever, or you literally said something... It, it upset them. Give me more on this real quick. You could have saw something in a dream as well. Somebody lied about a dream that they had too. To feel connected to you. Or to pretend to be connected to you. And it's not necessarily dreaming about you. It... It's not a shared dream either. It's a. I almost feel like I'm asking what this means. Like I want to know what this dream means. So I'm going to share it with you. I'm not talking about any dreams that I've shared. That's not what this is. It feels like okay. Um, I don't know. Someone in your family. Or it could be anyone. Someone's like oh my god. I had this weird fucking dream last night and I don't know what it means and it's just it's standing out to me dude what do you think and then they tell you you know whatever the fucking dream is and maybe you have an understanding and you go well it could mean this it could mean that you know if you're into that stuff or you would have to be if this person came to you with this but but it's not about deciphering the dream whoever was sharing these dreams with you or just a specific ones could you be multiple people doing it? Whoever shared this dream, these dreams, whatever with you, it wasn't about deciphering the dreams. They were talking to you. They didn't really have those dreams. Those dreams aren't fucking real. It's made up because of either something you said or because they want, they're, they're telling you something. They're telling you something. In a fucked up way so instead of just coming out and saying this 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 whatever happened they're going I had this dream and this this and this happened in the dream what do you think it means it's secret messages because they're fake dreams someone's trying to tell you something 
in an indirect way. Oh my god, the Seven Swords is there too. Sheesh. It's everywhere. Yeah, somebody lied about some Nanite dreams that they had because they're trying to not impress you. They're trying to talk to you. They're trying to tell you something. I don't know, I feel like my mind is blown or something with the uh, with that card. It's a shot in the dark, but they try it anyways, or they're gonna. I feel like I'm being really cryptic here. But this feels like your family might be, like someone close to you might be talking to you in, in code, okay? With fake dreams. And the things that they say, like, oh, I have a story to share with you. Or, I was just reading about this online. Or, you know, when you you separate yourself from information? Someone's been doing that to show you something. Whether you caught on or not, or whether you will catch on or not, strength. You're strong enough to overcome this, but you have someone on your side that you least expect. Could be a Leo. Or Virgo. It's not air. I don't know. This air energy is not on your side. Um, especially if it's masculine. Um, the number seven. Seven, seven, seven. What is that? Nine of Pentacles world it's like taking your independence from you I don't know this feels like bothersome energy like taking up your time the loo like the shitter <laughs> okay so I guess a bathroom could be significant somebody was I don't know, they're probably invading your privacy because, I mean, whatever happens in the loo stays in the loo, you know what I mean? Um, hopefully. <laughs> the smell might follow you, but it just depends on what you're doing in there. Yeah, you have... the most unlikely people on your side. It's unexpected, but I feel like Always try to fuck, fuck up, fuck the peas, fuck up the peas. Cause she's peaceful, sitting there by herself, reading a book, or on her phone, or tablet, or whatever, listening to music, just chilling. You know, like, oh, I need a minute to myself. Like that energy, whether it's an hour or more, cause she's pretty relaxed. I want to end that. I want to end this peaceful energy. I see you over there relaxing. see you over there by yourself okay I have something for you I have a question for you I, I don't know it just it feels like ending somebody's freedom ending their independence because the cat's on her shoulder is just saying Cats in front of the lion, too. Relaxing. Maybe you're relaxing with a cat, or there's a cat around when you do relax in your little garden. But it's like it just feels like when you're doing your own thing. When you're doing your own thing, they're sneaking it. I don't feel like you're being sneaky when you're doing your own thing. There's some type of sneakiness surrounding and lies surrounding doing your own thing, being by yourself. Give me more. What the fuck is this? This is weird. What is this about? 
Beth Mendick. It's somebody's trying to stop you from fucking chillaxing, apparently, from, you know, be being at peace. Whatever this is, is not all in your head. If someone's fucking with you, messing with you, I don't know. And if you've had those thoughts, like, why are you doing that? Why are you saying that? Why now? Peckable fucking timing for this, that, and the other. You, it's not all in your head. Someone was messing with you. They were trying to disrupt the peace. So that maybe you don't want to be alone. But I feel like I don't want you to be alone. I don't know why. Well, when you meditate for answers and clarity, you're usually by yourself. So someone just did not want you to be alone. And to get into that intuitive energy. Because we have the Queen of Cups here now. And that's very intuitive, loving. There could be a Scorpio involved. With the Queen of Swords again. This person didn't want you to know the truth about something. Yeah, there's justice here. Because I feel like the Queen of Swords and and the Queen of Cups is the same person. So you could have water and air in your chart prominently. Could be a Scorpio with air in your chart or an air sign with Scorpio in your chart. Whichever way it goes. Um... Maybe when you're by yourself, you can communicate better with the dead and people were interrupting that. So you would be confused and not fully understand the messages that you're receiving, especially if there's warnings in here. I don't know. Someone just did not want you to think the truth, know the truth, find out the truth about whatever they're up to. Because there's some sneaky crap in here. And I feel like they've already been caught. They just haven't, like, climbed out of the shadows yet. I, I don't know. Someone was just messing with another person because they were jealous. Because they didn't get what they wanted. I'm not going to get what I want. You're not going to get what you want. And you're never going to know what went on here. And that just hurt my eye. It's like I just got a piece of glass or cut right here under my eye. Like that stung right there. But it's really close to my eye. It's not like on my cheek or anything. It's right here. I don't know what that's about. I just heard I hate it when you do this. So somebody doesn't like when you do something. Maybe when you take time for yourself. Like, I don't like that. Well, you know, you gotta learn to get over your fucking self. If that's the case. Because everyone needs time to do whatever they love and whatever they want. Whatever the fuck they want, you know. I want one more of these cards because it's not... Whatever this is, is not all in your head. But somebody wanted to lead you to believe that it was. So whatever, you were right on the money with whatever you were thinking. There was just someone that didn't want you to think that way no more. Maximus? Well, there's a light bulb there. How can you feed others when your own table is empty? Mm-hmm. It's not all in your fucking head. It's like, how can you help anyone else if you're in a dark place? If, you, if you're not getting what you want, if you... If you have nothing to offer, how can you give? Well, we can give in multiple ways, I'm just saying. But someone trying to take something from you so that you weren't able to give your energy, your time, energy, and efforts to others. The name Maximus or Max could be significant. It's so funny because the table is empty and that's what it looks like, you know, to everyone else. They're going, all right, well, why are we coming over here to eat? There's no fucking food. Well, we're not going to We're hold that one. It's like, okay, you got this empty table. Your table's empty. And then you got another table over here that's long. And it's just like, you know, in those movies and shows where it's the king's table. It's got fucking everything all over it. It's just loaded. <laughs> It's just loaded with shit. And they're and they're, these people, this person's going, people, they're greedy. You're just saying. They're looking at your table like, well, I'm hungry. I'm not going to sit at this one. I'm going to go over here where all the bounty is, basically. So they walk over to that fucking big table. What they didn't know is that you have more <laughs> than what that king is offering. Because everything he has is on the table. And it's going to go bad. It's going to go rotten. Or it's going to get eaten all up right like <laughs> lickety split. You you savor things. So you have a root cellar and a pantry the size of the Taj Mahal that nobody can see because it's yours. 
and you were just cooking a meal. You're like, well, yeah, the table might be empty right now. <coughs> because the oven hasn't beeped yet. I was just getting ready to take this out of the oven. I slaved over this, you know, like, this meal is way better than that whole table of shit because I can keep making these meals. You know what I mean? Like, and I got more to come. It's just a little bit at a time. But you wanted to sit over there. So now it's all for me. That's what this feels like. <laughs> Greed gets you nowhere. I don't know if those analogies make sense. I hope they do. I hope you enjoyed this reading. And I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon. Love you guys. Peace.